it's snow time, literally. Now look, I don't live near a beach, so when it comes to fat tire bikes, they're more of a unique style choice, at least until it comes to snow. Then a fat tire bike becomes my primary mode of transportation. Now it doesn't happen very often for me. I live in North Alabama, and we usually get a good snow, and when I say good snow, I'm talking four to six inches, maybe once every few years. As is evidenced by the historical documents, I'm talking about my videos, I can tell you exactly when we had a significant snow based on the videos I've made. Going back as far as 2018, when I filmed what for us is a significant snow, and I used the Trek Excalibur 8, I still think back fondly on that bike. It took another three years after that before we had another snow bike worthy video, or at least worthy amount of accumulation. In 2022, I made another snow video, but that was just enough snow to kind of have a snow video. Or at least it only lasted a day or two, which happens here. It's a common saying, we get snow on Monday and within a couple of days it's 68 degrees and sunny. Then there are the fluke storms like we received this year. Snow and ice and the coldest temperatures I can recall in my lifetime. I've already made two shorts videos on it where normal snows only last a couple of days before they completely melt. This one has endured the entire town. It's been shut down for about a week now. Because here's the thing about North Alabama weather events, winter ones, often it's not just snow. This started with a layer of ice, followed by an inch of snow, and then more ice. You can see the ice bouncing off the snow here, even making divots in it. This adds up to layer upon layer, five to six inches of snow compacted down to three or four inches of mobility nightmare. And then we get hit with zero degree weather, and we just don't have the infrastructure to treat all the roads. And as far as I understand, this is the entire salt reserves, which is actually sand, for the entire county. And that would be Lauderdale County, which has a land area per Wikipedia of 668 square miles. I don't know how many miles of accumulated roads cover that area, but it's a lot of roads. Which, at least in the case of this winter storm, which was known about far in advance, I don't think they mobilized a single truck pre-storm it was a holiday weekend. We like our holidays here. I'm not making this up. This is the lot where they would get this salt. This was the day the storm hit, earlier in that day. And this was the next morning. All that snow and ice compacted layer after layer. So I reached into my basement for my trusty snow bike that has literally been sitting for two years since that last video. It sat for so long, both tires were flat. A quick air up and it's right back in duty. I'm not gonna re-review the bike. I have videos on that I'll link down in the description as well as link to the bike if it still exists on Walmart or Amazon's website. It's a good bike, it's the Dolomite ALX. Right at the point where Schwinn and Mongoose, well, at least where their bikes, started making that transition and arguably changing big box bikes forever. The big deal here on top of, at the time, having unheard of components on a big box fat tire bike, this bike had sized frames. This one is a medium, a perfect fit for me, and decently equipped out of the box. No customizations really required, but you know me, I can't help myself. I made it mine. To keep everyone on board, I'll give you the key highlights, starting with those fat tires. I swapped out the factory tires for something different, better maybe, at least I think so, but that could just be because the branding says the TPI is higher. They are or were made by Framed, I don't know the full story on that, but you can look it up. These are their Wolf Tracks model, cool branding, they work good in the snow, they look good, I think they were a shade bit lighter than the factory tires. Either way, I bought them, I put them on this bike. At the same time I swapped those out, I decided to pay attention to that fork. When you get to fat tire forks, fat tire air forks, they're very expensive, and the budget options are, well, brands that normally I don't have a lot of faith in, like this one, Bologna, I call them Bologna forks. I bought this one, I got it super cheap, or, well, cheaper than the other fat tire forks. And I gotta say, this has worked out well, so maybe I need to reevaluate a bit. Here was a surprise. This is an air fork. This held air for two years. I haven't touched it. It still has the same amount of air. So maybe I got a good fork here. Again, I might consider reevaluating a bit. But as far as fat tire bike forks go, I'm happy with this purchase. I also upgraded the brakes on this. Hydraulic disc brakes, sometimes hydraulic brakes, you don't touch them for a couple of years. They don't respond all that well to being set up. These have worked perfectly, aside from a slight squeak you'll hear. 
on the rotor, and that's because a tire from another bike was leaned against this. Then, of course, the red to red, and then, yeah, another red. That spacer, I couldn't resist. Of course, all that pales in comparison to my biggest upgrades, these two stickers. Maurice the Mongoose, and look how it matches color-wise with the Kev Central sticker. Link in the description if you want to pick up one of those Kev Central stickers, water, UV, and snow resistant. And that's how it sits, the same as last year, my snow steed. How did it do this year, though, with layers of snow and ice mixed? My PSI of choice, 8 PSI in the tires. I can safely go down to 5 PSI with these tires, but I found 8 to be a perfect balance between rolling resistance and grip in the snow. And I can tell you, this bike in this configuration can 100% handle everything that nature has dished out in this year's snowmageddon, at least in Alabama terms. That means, given the need to venture out, I have the means to do so, even in conditions where... Look, I've never seen snow where so few people got out in Alabama on these roads. There is a deeply bred-in redneck impulse in Florence, Alabama. It snows, people get out in their vehicles for no reason, and then end up in a ditch. I try not to be one of those people, and that's why I have the Dolomite here. The Dolomite ALX modified a safe and completely usable choice. It plows right through all of this, and it keeps me upright as long as I'm paying attention. And I was able to do a few minutes of joyriding here and there. I chased a few sleds, good times, but there's a problem with snow mixed with sleet for a guy that's underprepared. At least for riding with active snow and sleet going on. The problem I was having, my face. Even with the covering and my glasses, in less than a mile, my face and my glasses completely covered in ice. And that was my only limitation. I was limited to about a mile or less than a mile. I tried to make it to my aunt's house, which was three miles away, to check her antifreeze. I bought the last tester in the area. Well, she's on her own. I had to turn around again, less than a mile. I couldn't see on the way back. I even removed my glasses at one point. Yeah, that sleet feels like needles. That's me rubbing my eyes in severe pain. I'm telling you, it's rough stuff. Not to mention the fitness level you need to ride long distances in snow and ice. It takes a lot out of you. It took a lot out of me. So I learned something about myself and about my snow bike and riding. Riding in the snow on a snow bike, it is fun for one day. After that, it's not so fun. It's a necessity. It's been going on for a week. And I'm going to be honest, I never thought I would say this. I'm looking forward to green grass, black asphalt, and maybe some Alabama heat. Just to tell you how rough this is on people that aren't ready for it, even after it stopped snowing, those record low temperatures, zero degrees, all this was a super chore for me to pedal through. The closest analogy I can give you is if you're on a mountain bike trail and it was all uphill. No downhill. Torture that just happens to look beautiful. Of course, there are benefits. You can make snowmen out of it. Short runs, a few doors down. They're not bad. They're actually kind of fun. Of course, chasing down sleds like I showed in the intro to this video. Other than that, not a lot of biking. I've been doing with it cold, it's all just necessity based, but I have done other things. I filmed my gutter guards, how they handle snow and ice. If you're a subscriber to my Kev Reviews channel, you'll know these. I installed them last year, they're working great. I have a follow up video there, and this is part of that footage. Well, let me clarify maybe by the time you see this, I will have posted the video on these. If not, it'll be coming soon, so be sure to be subscribed over there. I also recorded a brief bit on my mini split system and how it handles snow and ice, more specifically about my rubber vibration mounts that kept it up off the ground and safe, simply because I know someone that put theirs down on the ground, and now they're having fan and ice related issues. So these are not so funny now, are they? Please get some of those. Save your mini split system. And I haven't quit playing with this Mini Z 4x4 Jeep in the snow. It's fun. So less biking than anything else, really, but if needed, I could absolutely go somewhere. That means I get to keep the blueberry safe, take the bike instead of the car. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did eventually chain this up. I didn't really need to where this is located, but then I started thinking about it and sort of psyched myself out. And that's the story, the enduring tenure of the Mongoose Dolomite ALX here on Kev Central, still in my stable of bikes used on snow days, where it does far better than I do. And as far as fat tire biking goes, I really don't have another option since I donated all the fat tire e-bikes. Then again, that might not be a bad thing. All this zero degree weather, those batteries would fade fast, and then I would have the extra weight of an e-bike to pedal around. So the ALX, it's still the snow king.
And I want to hear from you. Comment below with your experience with bikes and snow. Do you use a fat tire bike like I do? Let me hear what you have to say. Also, please thumbs up this video. That helps keep Kev Central in the algorithm. More viewers equals more content. I also hope that you are subscribed. If you're not, please consider subscribing. But most of all, I want to thank everyone for watching this video and being part of the journey. Have a great day. Note that some links in the description are affiliate links. This channel may earn a commission from those. It's a great way to support the channel without costing you anything extra.